Djibouti, officially the Republic of Djibouti is a country located in the Horn of Africa. It is bordered by Eritrea in the north, Ethiopia in the west and south, and Somalia in the southeast. The remainder of the border is formed by the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden at the east. Djibouti occupies a total area of and its railroad to Deirdawa and later Addis Ababa allowed it to quickly supersede Zilu as the port for southern Ethiopia and the Ogden. It was subsequently renamed to the French territory of the Afaz and the Issas in 1967. A decade later, the Djiboutian people voted for independence. This officially marked the establishment of the Republic of Djibouti named after its capital city. Djibouti joined the United Nations the same year, on 20 September 1977. In the early 1990s, tensions over government representation led to armed conflict, which ended in a power-sharing agreement in 2000 between the ruling party and the opposition. Another connects it to Gaboud, meaning upland, plateau. From 1862 until 1894, the land to the north of the Gulf of Tajuera was called a bock. Under French administration, from 1883 to 1967 the area was known as French Somali Land French, Côte Française des Somalis, and from 1967 to 1977 as the French territory of the Afars and the Issas French, Territoire Française des Afars et des Issas. History Prehistory Djibouti area has been inhabited since the Neolithic. According to linguists, the first Afroasiatic speaking populations arrived in the region during this period from the families proposed Ahayim at original homeland in the Nile Valley, or the Near East. Other scholars propose that the Afroasiatic family developed in situ in the Horn, with its speakers subsequently dispersing from there. Pottery predating the mid 2 nd millennium has been found at Azakoma, an inland lake area on the Gobad Plain. The site's wear is characterized by punctate and incision geometric designs, which bear a similarity to the Sabir culture phase 1 ceramics from Malabu in southern Arabia. Longhorn humpless cattle bones have likewise been discovered at Azakoma, suggesting that domesticated cattle were present by around 3,500 years ago. Rock art of what appear to be antelopes and a giraffe are also found at Doro and Balho. Handoga dated to the 4th millennium BP, has in turn yielded obsidian microliths and plain ceramics used by early nomadic pastoralists with domesticated cattle. Punt. Together with northern Somalia, Eritrea and the Red Sea coast of Sudan, Djibouti is considered the most likely location of the territory known to the ancient Egyptians as Punt or Tarnet Juru, meaning God's land. The first mention of the land of Punt dates to the 25th century BC. The Puntites were a nation of people who had close relations with ancient Egypt during the reign of the 5th dynasty Pharaoh Seyur and the 18th dynasty Queen Hatshepsut. According to the temple murals at Deir el-Bihari, the land of Punt was ruled at that time by King Paru and Queen Atit. I Sultan at 1285 to 1415. Through close contacts with the adjacent Arabian Peninsula for more than 1,000 years, the Somali and Afar ethnic groups in the region became among the first populations on the continent to embrace Islam. The Ifat Sultanate was a Muslim medieval kingdom in the Horn of Africa. Founded in 1285 by the Walashma dynasty, it was centered in Zila. Ifat established bases in Djibouti and northern Somalia, and from there expanded southward to the Arma Mountains. Its Sultan Amar Walashma or his son Ali, 
according to another source is recorded as having conquered the Sultanate of Shuwa in 1285. Tadis Tamrat explains Sultan Amar's military expedition as an effort to consolidate the Muslim territories in the Horn, in much the same way as Emperor Yakuno Amalek was attempting to unite the Christian territories in the Highlands during the same period. These two states inevitably came into conflict over Shuwa and territories further south. A lengthy war ensued, but the Muslim sultanates of the time were not strongly unified. Ifat was finally defeated by Emperor Ramdasayan I of Ethiopia in 1332, and withdrew from Shiwa. Adal Sultanate 1415-1577 Islam was introduced to the area early on from the Arabian Peninsula, shortly after the Hijra. Zealous Tumirab Masjid al qiblatain dates to the 7th century, and is the oldest mosque in the city. In the late 9th century, Ali Akbar wrote that Muslims were living along the northern Horn seaboard. He also mentioned that the Adal Kingdom had its capital in Zila, a port city in the northwestern Adal region abutting Djibouti. This suggests that the Adal Sultanate with Zila as its headquarters dates back to at least the 9th or 10th century. According to I. M. Lewis, the polity was governed by local dynasties consisting of Somalized Arabs or Arabized Somalis who also ruled over the similarly established Sultanate of Mogadishu in the Benadir region to the south. Adel's history from this founding period forth would be characterized by a succession of battles with neighboring Abyssinia. Additionally, archaeological excavations at Tiel have yielded tombs. As of 1997, 118 stele were reported in the area. Along with the stele in the Hadiya zone, the structures are identified by local residents as Yegrandinghe or Grand's Stone, in reference to Imam Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al Ghazi Ahmad Gura or Gran, ruler of the Adil Sultanate. Ottoman Ayaw at 1577 to 1867. Governor Abaker ordered the Egyptian garrison at Sagalo to retire to Zila. The cruiser Sainale reached Sagalo shortly after the Egyptians had departed. French troops occupied the fort despite protests from the British agent in Aden, Major Frederick Mercer Hunter, who dispatched troops to safeguard British and Egyptian interests in Zila and prevent further extension of French influence in that direction. On 14 April 1884 the commander of the patrol sloop Linforant reported on the Egyptian occupation in the Gulf of Tajuera. The commander of the patrol sloop Lavordruil reported that the Egyptians were occupying the interior between Abok and Tajuera. Emperor Yoann IV of Ethiopia signed an accord with Great Britain to cease fighting the Egyptians and to allow the evacuation of Egyptian forces from Ethiopia and the Somalia littoral. The Egyptian garrison was withdrawn from Tajuera. Leon Slagard deployed a patrol sloop to Tajuera the following night. French Somaliland 1894 to 1977. From 1862 until 1894, the land to the north of the Gulf of Tajuera was called Abok and was ruled by Somali and Afar sultans, local authorities with whom France signed various treaties between 1883 and 1887 to first gain a foothold in the region. In 1958, on the eve of neighboring Somalia's independence in 1960, a referendum was held in Djibouti to decide whether to remain with France or to join the Somali Republic. The referendum turned out in favor of a continued association with France, partly due to a combined yes vote by the sizable Afar ethnic group and resident Europeans. There were also allegations of widespread vote rigging. The majority of those who had voted no were Somalis who were strongly in favor of joining a united Somalia as had been proposed by Mahmoud Harbi. Vice President of the Government Council. Harbi was killed in a plane crash two years later. In 1976, members of the Front de Liberation de la Côte des Somalis also clashed with the Gendarmerie Nationale Intervention Group over a bus hijacking en route to Loyada. Shortly after the plebiscite was held, the former Côte Francaise des Somalis French Somali land was renamed to Territoire Francaise des Affaires et des Essas. Djibouti Republic. In 1977, a third referendum took place. A landslide 98. 8% of the electorate supported disengagement from France, officially marking Djibouti's independence. Hassan Gould Aptidon, a Somali politician who had campaigned for a yes vote in the referendum of 1958, 
eventually wound up as the nation's first president 1977 to 1999, consisting of 65 members elected every five years. Although unicameral, the constitution provides for the creation of a senate. Gula was sworn in for his second six-year term after a one-man election on 8 April 2005. He took 100% of the votes in a 78.9% turnout. Although opposition groups boycotted the ballot over changes to the constitution permitting Gula to run again for office, on 31 March 2013, Gula replaced long-serving Prime Minister Dilita Mohamed Dilita with former President of the Union for a Presidential Majority UMP Abdul Qader Kamil Mohamed. In December 2014, the ruling Union for the Presidential Majority also signed a framework agreement with the Union of National Salvation Coalition, which paves the way for opposition legislators to enter Parliament and for reformation of the National Electoral Agency. Foreign Relations Foreign Relations of Djibouti are managed by the Djiboutian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Djibouti maintains close ties with the governments of Somalia, Ethiopia, France and the United States. Ties with Somalia are especially close, as Djibouti and Somalis often identify themselves with their brethren to the south. Relations with Eritrea are tense due to territorial claims over the Rasdumra Peninsula. Since the 2000s, the Djibouti authorities have strengthened ties with China. Djibouti is likewise an active participant in Arab League and African Union affairs. Human rights. In its 2011 Freedom in the World report, Freedom House ranked Djibouti as not free, a downgrading from its former status as partly free. There are occasional reports of police beating prisoners. Reporters Without Borders claims that Dira Ibrahim Brale died from injuries sustained under torture by Sergeant Major Abdurrahman Omar said from 23 the 27th of April 2011. Conditions in the jails are considered worse, with no formal system of care. Security forces frequently make illegal arrests. John Paul Noel Abdi, president of the Djibouti League of Human Rights, was arrested on 9 February 2011 after reporting on opposition protests in connection with the Arab Spring earlier that month. According to Human Rights Watch, he did not support the protests themselves but objected to what he described as arbitrary arrests. He was later released on health grounds but the charges remain. Military. The Djibouti Armed Forces include the Djibouti National Army, which consists of the Coastal Navy, the Djibouti Air Force Force Area and Djibouti FAD, and the National Gendarmerie GN. The manpower available for military service was 170,386 males and 221,411 females aged 16 to 49. Following the establishment of the Federal Government of Somalia in 2012, a Djibouti delegation also attended the inauguration ceremony of Somalia's new president. In recent years, Djibouti has improved its training techniques, military command and information structures and has taken steps to becoming more self-reliant in supplying its military to collaborate with the United Nations in peacekeeping missions, or to provide military help to countries that officially ask for it now deployed to Somalia and Sudan. Foreign military bases. Djibouti's strategic location by the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which separates the Gulf of Aden from the Red Sea and controls the approaches to the Suez Canal, has made it a desirable location for foreign military bases. Camp Lemaire was abandoned by the French and later leased to the United States Central Command in 2001. The lease was renewed in 2014 for another 20 years. The 13th Demi Brigade of the French Foreign Legion is still stationed in Djibouti as the largest French military presence abroad. The only one commanded by a three-star general. The country also hosts the only overseas Chinese support base and the only overseas Japanese military base. The hosting of foreign military bases is an important part of Djibouti's economy. The United States pays $63 million a year to rent Camp Lemaire, and China pays $20 million a year. The lease payments added up to more than 5% of Djibouti's GDP of in 2017. Military presence in Djibouti China has, 
in recent times, stepped up its military presence in Africa, with ongoing plans to secure an even greater military presence in Djibouti specifically. China's presence in Djibouti is tied to strategic ports to ensure the security of Chinese assets. Djibouti's strategic location makes the country prime for an increased military presence. Administrative Divisions Djibouti is partitioned into six administrative regions, with Djibouti City representing one of the official regions. It is further subdivided into 20 districts. Geography, Location and Habitat Djibouti is situated in the Horn of Africa on the Gulf of Aden and the Babel Mand, at the southern entrance to the Red Sea. It lies between latitudes 10 degrees and 13 degrees N and longitudes 41 degrees and 44 degrees E. At the northernmost point of the Great Rift Valley, it is here in Djibouti that the rift between the African Plate and the Somali Plate meet the Arabian Plate forming a geologic trip point. The tectonic interaction at this trip point has created the lowest elevation of any place in Africa, and indeed, the second lowest depression on dry land found anywhere on Earth surpassed only by the depression along the border of Jordan and Israel. The country's coastline stretches, with terrain consisting mainly of plateau plains and highlands. Djibouti has a total area of its borders extend of which are shared with Eritrea, with Ethiopia, and with Somalia. Djibouti has eight mountain ranges with peaks of over. The Mausawali range is considered the country's highest mountain range, with the tallest peak on the border with Ethiopia and Eritrea. It has an elevation of, in the uplands ranges from 500 to 800 meters 1640 to 2624 feet, are comparable and cooler to those on the coast in the hottest months of June until August. December and January is the coolest month with averages low temperatures falling as low as 15 degrees Celsius 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Djibouti have either a hot semi-arid climate BSH or a hot desert climate BWH, although temperatures are much moderated at the highest elevations. Wildlife is spread over three main regions namely from the northern mountain region of the country to the volcanic plateau in its southern and central part and culminating in the coastal region. Most species of wildlife are found in the northern part of the country, in the ecosystem of the Day Forest National Park. At an average altitude of, the area includes the Goda Massif, with a peak of, it covers an area of of Juniperus Prosser Forest with many of the trees rising to height. This forest area is the main habitat of the endangered and endemic Djibouti Frankelina bird, and another recently noted vertebrate, Platyceps afarensis a colubrine snake. It also contains many species of woody and herbaceous plants, including boxwood and olive trees, which account for 60% of the total identified species in the country. According to the country profile related to biodiversity of wildlife in Djibouti, the nation contains more than 820 species of plants, 493 species of invertebrates, 455 species of fish, 40 species of reptiles, 3 species of amphibians, 360 species of birds and 66 species of mammals. Mammals include several species of antelope, such as Somerings gazelle and Pelzons gazelle. As a result of the hunting ban imposed since early 1970 these species are well conserved now. Other characteristic mammals are Grevis zebra, Hamadrias baboon and Hunter's antelope. The warthog, a vulnerable species, is also found in the Day National Park. The coastal waters have dugongs and Abyssinians in it. The latter needs confirmation by further studies. Green turtles and hawksbill turtles are in the coastal waters where nestling also takes place. The northeast African Cheetah Asininix Jibatus somerinii is thought to be extinct in Djibouti. Economy Djibouti's economy is largely concentrated in the service sector. Commercial activities revolve around the country's free trade policies and strategic location as a Red Sea transit point. Due to limited rainfall, Vegetables and fruits are the principal production crops, and other food items require importation. The GDP purchasing power parity in 2013 was estimated at $2.505 billion, 
with a real growth rate of 5% annually. Per capita income is around $2,874 PPP. The services sector constituted around 79.7% of the GDP, followed by industry at 17.3%, and agriculture at 3%. A third major seaport intended to further develop the national transit capacity to improve the environment for direct foreign investment. The Djibouti authorities in conjunction with various non-profit organizations have launched a number of development projects aimed at highlighting the country's commercial potential. The government has also introduced new private sector policies targeting high interest and inflation rates including relaxing the tax burden on enterprises and allowing exemptions on consumption tax. Djibouti's gross domestic product expanded by an average of more than 6% per year, from 341 million US dollars in 1985 to 1 US dollar. 5 billion in 2015. The Djiboutian franc is the currency of Djibouti. It is issued by the Central Bank of Djibouti the country's monetary authority. Since the Djiboutian franc is pegged to the U.S. dollar, it is generally stable and inflation is not a problem. This has contributed to the growing interest in investment in the country. Ten conventional and Islamic banks operate in Djibouti. Most arrived within the past few years, including the Somali money transfer company Dahabshil and BDCD a subsidiary of Swiss financial investments. The banking system had previously been monopolized by two institutions, the Indo-Suez Bank and the commercial and industrial bank Simra. Oversea bridge through Djibouti, referred to as the Bridge of the Horns. The investor Ter Bin Laden has been linked to the project. However, it was announced in June 2010 that phase I of the project had been delayed. Transport. The Djibouti Ambulai International Airport in Djibouti City, the country's only international airport, serves many intercontinental routes with scheduled and chartered flights. Air Djibouti is the flag carrier of Djibouti and is the country's largest airline. The new and electrified standard gauge Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway started operation in January 2018. Its main purpose is to facilitate freight services between the Ethiopian hinterland and the Djiboutian port of Doral Air. Car ferries pass the Gulf of Tajuera from Djibouti City to Tajuera. There is the port of Doral west of Djibouti City, which is the main port of Djibouti. The port of Doral is the terminal of the new Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway. In addition to the port of Doral Air, which handles general cargo and oil imports, Djibouti currently 2018 has three other major ports for the import and export of bulk goods and livestock, the port of Tajuera Potash, the Damajog Port Livestock and the port of Kubait Salt. Almost 95% of Ethiopia's imports and exports move through Djiboutian ports. The Djiboutian highway system is named according to the road classification. Roads that are considered primary roads are those that are fully asphalted throughout their entire length and in general they carry traffic between all their major towns in Djibouti. Media and Telecommunications